Welcome to episode 44 of Memorial Youth Podcast. This is your host, Landon, and my co-host, Christina. Hey, hey. Just a reminder that the purpose of this podcast is to grow alongside you each week as we look into Scripture and to have a little fun while we're at it. Our first segment is always our super fun segment, and what do you have for us this week Christina. Today we're going to do a classic. It's called This or That. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. So I'm going to give you two choices. You have to pick one of them. You guys at home and Landon here. Okay. Here we go. Ready. Number one. Dog or cat? Dog. Dog. Netflix or YouTube? Netflix. Netflix. Actually, I take my back. YouTube. Oh, wow. Nice. Okay. Phone call or text? Text. Me too. Uh, Toast or eggs? Eggs. Toast. Cardio or weights? Weights. Cardio. Facebook or Twitter? Hmm. I hate Twitter. Does anybody use Twitter? Do you guys even use Twitter? I, I don't think so. I think I'm a fan of Twitter above Facebook. If I could choose Instagram, I would choose Instagram. But Facebook. All right, next. Ice cream cone or snow cone? Ice cream cone. Ice cream cone. Uh, mobile games on your phone or console games? Console. Mobile games. <laughs> That's all I do. Um, while you're walking, would you rather listen to music or podcast? Mm-hmm. Podcast. 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 We're podcast people. Um, last one. Would you rather get new clothes or a new phone? New clothes. New clothes. Me too. Same. I, Phones I are a them. dime a dozen. You well, can't tell the difference between an 8 plus and a 10 right. XR. They basically you know? can all do the same things. But same thing. clothes, that's so fun to get new clothes. It is. So let us know what were your answers. That's our this or that game today. We're going to walk through the Bible, continue it in our scripture today. What do we got, Landon? Uh, here we go. Uh, we're in our series called A Walk Through the Bible. The Bible is made up of 66 different books, and yet all these different books tell one collective story about God's love and redemption of humanity uh, through Jesus Christ. We're exploring that story. God created the world perfect and good. Sin entered our lives and in this world and broke it. God has a plan to bring redemption of all of creation, all humanity, uh, and he operates that plan through his people. He chose his people through Abraham. They were enslaved in Egypt. Moses led them out. Joshua led them to the promised land. Then different judges and chiefs reigned over Israel. And it was a time of chaos and confusion. um, And they really wanted a king. Last week we talked about how Samuel was a prophet and a judge who was raised up. And we're going to find out that God calls him to uh, select the first king of Israel. And that's where our scripture picks up today. This scripture comes from 1 Samuel 9. 15 through 27, and chapter 10, verse 1. Now the Lord had told Samuel the previous day, About this time tomorrow I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. Anoint him to be the leader of my people Israel. He will rescue them from the Philistines, for I have looked down on my people in mercy and have heard their cry. When Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said, That's the man I told you about. He will rule my people. Just then Saul approached Samuel at the gateway and asked, Can you please tell me where the seer's house is? I am the seer, Samuel replied. Go up to the place of worship ahead of me. We will eat there together, and in the morning I'll tell you what you want to know and send you on your way. And don't worry about those donkeys that were lost three days ago, for they have been found. And I'm here to tell you that you and your family are the focus of all Israel's hopes. Saul replied, But I'm only from the tribe of Benjamin, the smallest tribe in Israel, and my family is the least important of all the families of that tribe. Why are you talking like this to me? When Samuel brought Saul and his servant into the hall and placed them at the head of the table, honoring them above the third, the 30 special guests, Samuel then instructed the cook to bring Saul the finest cut of meat, the piece that had been set aside for the guest of honor. So the cook brought in the meat and placed it before Saul. Go ahead and eat it, Samuel said. I was saving it for you even before I invited these others. So Saul ate with Samuel that day. When they came down from the place of worship and returned to town, Samuel took Saul up to the roof of the house and prepared a bed for him there. At daybreak the next morning, Samuel called to Saul, Get up, it's time you are on your way. So Saul got ready, and he and Samuel left the house together. When they reached the edge of the town, Samuel told Saul to send his servant on ahead. After the servant was gone, Samuel said, Stay here, for I have received a special message for you from God. Then Samuel took a flask of olive oil and poured it over Saul's head. 
He kissed Saul and said, I am doing this because the Lord has appointed you to be the ruler over Israel, his special possession. So a lot of stuff happening here, but the gist of it is this, is Samuel's this prophet and leader of Israel, and God has told him, hey, you're going to appoint the first king. And he sees this man Saul, and God tells him, that's him. And so Samuel takes Saul, and he tells him, and he, he anoints him with oil. He does this kind of special ceremony and honoring Saul, but also letting him know, hey, you're going to be the first king. And I want to start out by saying, and this is kind of the preface of what we talked about last week and what we've talked about, is God hears our cry. The Philistine army is the enemy of Israel, and they are constantly battling them and stealing from them, hurting them, oppressing the Israelites. And God hears his people crying. And God hears them saying, like, hey, we need a leader. And so God has given them this king who will hopefully lead them uh, uh, and deliver them from the Philistines. Yeah, this shows us that when God, like when we're in pain, God hears that. Like he hears our cries for like, hey, help me, God. Like we are in pain, like we are not okay. I mean, even just yesterday, I, I was having like a really bad day and I was just like, God, like help me get through this day. And he did, like I got through it. And today I'm feeling a lot more optimistic about all the stuff I was negative about yesterday. And it just shows like I was in pain and I like prayed to God. I was just like, God, this day sucks. Like help me through this. And like God hears that. And like I felt comfort through that. And so it just reminds me like whether it's big or small pain, like God sees us, he hears us. And, you know, we want to talk to him about that. The second awesome point I, see, I think I see from this scripture is that God can use anybody. When Samuel comes to Saul and he tells him, hey, you're going to be the king. You're going to be this guest of honor. You're going to be this important person in Israel. Did you catch Saul's response? Yeah. He says, I can't do this. I'm from the least important family and the least important tribe. Like I'm the last person that should be selected as this hope for Israel, this king, this honored position. And yet Samuel is told by God, this is is who it is and, and what that tells me is that God can use anybody and everybody right like you may feel sometimes like unimportant I know I felt like that before uh, but it shows that like God has an amazing plan for all of us whether we feel like you know unpopular or like unimportant or like undervalued like no matter how we're feeling God puts us at such high a value and he has amazing plans for us. So even though Saul here, he felt like unimportant. He was like, nobody knows me. I'm from like the least tribe in Israel. Like I'm from this small place. Like I'm not important. Like I'm not important enough for that role. But like God says, no, like you are important. And I, I think that's a good reminder for you, for me, that like no matter who we are, um, like we have important, amazing plans that God has for us. And I think a part of those amazing plans is they're not always the way that we see the plans right. happening. Yeah. God works in mysterious ways. Yeah. And here what I mean, here's what I mean by that is not only does he select this person that nobody else thought would be like picked, right? Like if, if Samuel had to pick, he'd probably go to like one of the more important tribes and the more important families and choose someone like that. But instead, God tells him to choose this like unexpected person to be king. But not only that, he doesn't tell Samuel like way ahead of time that the king's going to be here today. Right. He doesn't say like, hey, his name's going to be Saul. He's going to be this tall. He doesn't like prepare him. Instead, he asks Samuel to like in faith, listen to him. And so Samuel wakes up that day. And the reason Saul is in the town of Samuel, get this, is they've lost three donkeys. And he's been <laughs> sent by his dad to go like find these donkeys and they can't find them. And so him and his servant are like walking all over and they come to this town where Samuel's at. And Samuel sees him and Saul was coming to see Samuel to see if he knew where his donkeys were. I hate when that happens, right? Yeah. But then Samuel says like, it is told by God, hey, that's him. And so what I mean by that is God works in mysterious, crazy ways and we can't always know those ways. Yeah, and you might not know it or like realize it or like see it happening in your life, but... God is working in your life, whether you see it, whether you feel it, like 
in little bits each day, like God gives you blessings. God shows his love for you in different ways. Maybe you're not looking for it. Maybe you're missing it. Maybe you're not seeing it, but like he is seeking you and he wants to have a relationship with you and he's working things for your good. Even when life isn't good, that doesn't mean that God's not bringing good things to your life and like wanting you to know he's there for you and he loves you. So you might feel like life is insane and bad right now, but like know that God is like seeking you and that God is working in you even if we don't realize it. And I challenge you and us to like start looking for those ways that God's working in our life. The last thing I want to point out in this scripture is that when we look at Saul's life here, we see this humble, devout follower of God, someone who's willing to serve and and really like is humble about who he is and what he has to do. And the thing about Saul's life as it continues is it doesn't stay that way. In fact, it's almost a life that says like, hey, beware, be cautious, be prepared because you can be a follower of God. You can be humble. You can be like a servant to other people. But if you're not careful, you can end up going down a road you don't want to. Even though you've started following God, even though you've been humble, even though you've been serving, if you're not careful, um, you can turn down a path that you don't want to. And we're going to see when we look at Saul's life that that's where it's going to head. So this is like a really cool point to show like he's good, doing good and he's doing um, what he should and he's humble and he's faithful, um, but it doesn't stay that way. Yeah, if we've decided like, hey, we want to give our lives to God, we want to like follow Christ, we want to be like named Christians, we want to be Jesus followers, then we can't just like go into autopilot and just be like, okay, I'm following Christ, but I'm going to like live however. Like we got to check ourselves. We got to like think about how are we living? How do we want to live in the future? How do we want to follow God in our daily life? Um, and, and just make sure that we're doing the right things um, that are reflective of what Jesus would be doing. Uh, we got to check ourselves or else we really could like steer off the wrong path. If we want to keep following God, we need to like make sure we're keeping ourselves in check. Sometimes that means keeping ourselves in check personally or having like the people around us like, hey, like be there for me, keep me accountable. And it means doing the things that draws us close mm -hmm. to God and staying with those things even when it's difficult. Right. Thank you so much for joining us this week on Memorial Youth Podcast. Tune in next Sunday for episode 45 as we continue our series, A Walk Through the Bible. Remember, you are loved by God and you are loved by us. See ya. See ya.